I'd like to welcome everybody to the first week of the Press Box from, at DailyChronicle.com. I'm John Stutt, Daily Chronicle Sports Editor. I'm here with John Sally, who's an NIU beat writer, and I'm here with Kyle Orton, I mean Nick Gertz, who's a sports <laughs> writer, and he'll be covering the Cal for us. Uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of NIU football. Tell, tell us a little bit about the team. They won two games last year. Uh, should we expect more? You know, I think you should. I think it's a, uh, a new year for NIU. They have a new coach. Joe Novak retired. Jerry Kill is in. And it's uh, there's a lot of excitement around the program right now. Jerry Kill is a guy that has brought a lot of energy to the program. And it's it's going to be a different team than what you're used to seeing. You're not going to see them run the ball every play. It's a, it's a team that's going to throw the ball. It's a team that's going to run the option. It's going to be a team that's run the spread. And so we still don't know who the quarterback is, though. We, we had the news conference today. And Jerry Kill, uh, again, stuck to his guns and said he's not going to be reveal, revealing who his quarterback is until Saturday. It's between senior Dan Nicholson and Richard freshman Chandler Harnish. Both guys bring a little bit to the table. Uh, Nicholson obviously has the experience. He's been there before. Harnish is still a Richard freshman, probably a better fit for the system. He runs a little better. You know, At the same time, he's untested. So we don't know who's going to be out there Saturday uh, at Minnesota. Who would you pick? I think right now I would pick Harnish just based, based on reps. I, I think that's, that's what I would go as a He's seen the most reps in practice. He's looked the sharpest on the most days. Now, Nicholson did miss five or six days because of that sore throwing shoulder. So I think I would go with Harness just because I feel like he's a better fit. But Nicholson can do a lot of things, so, you know, who knows? Now, Justin Anderson's back. We've seen a lot of 1,000-yard seasons in a row for NIU. Is that straight going to come to an end? I don't think it will. I think that uh, Jerry Kill has adamantly said that he's going to stick to running the ball. He wants to be, if you want an example, Texas Christian is, is the example, and they run the ball like crazy. So I think that Justin Anderson is probably another guy that if he stays healthy, will rush for 1,000 yards. He's lost some weight. He's back to a, a playing weight of about 220, and he feels good about that, and I think that he'll probably hit 1,000 yards this year. They open the season this week at 6 p.m. Saturday at Minnesota, and now Minnesota's a team from the Big Ten, but what should we expect in that game? Well, first of all, Jerry Kill is undefeated against the Big Ten. His Southern Illinois Salukis beat Indiana uh, a couple years ago. And so he's got experience beating Big Ten teams. I think that we should probably expect a close game. Minnesota was a one-win team from last year. They bring in a great recruiting class. It was top 15 in the country, I believe. And uh, it should be a close game. I think Minnesota gets the edge because it's at home. But Minnesota did lose to a MAC team last year in Bowling Green. So who knows? All right, now on to the preps. We've got DeKalb I. They won three games last year. Tell us a little bit about DeKalb. What's different this year? It's going to be a very interesting year for DeKalb. I mean, this is the third year for Kurt Johansson, and the uh, first year was, uh, I think, one win. Last year was three wins, the most since 1989. If they continue making that step, four or five wins might not be out of the question. Uh, schedule looks pretty favorable for that. Who's the guys we should watch? Uh, definitely Kyle Walling, a quarterback. He played there last year and with uh, somewhat success. Mandel Williams, a running back, who was a, a really good power running back from what I saw last year. And at defense, Matt Fletcher, one of the top players in the Western Sun. All right, now they play Friday night against Ottawa. It's at Ottawa this time. Hopefully What's going to happen? Hopefully not the same results from two years ago. Uh, Ottawa pretty much ran right over them, and last year was a big difference. Uh, DeKalb's defense held them pretty tightly, and if it wasn't for a late interception at the last minute of the game, DeKalb could have walked away with the victory. So, I mean, I could see the same thing happening this year. Now what everybody really wants to know is, you know, they beat Sycamore last year. Right. Can they do it again? Well, with Sycamore losing as many players as they did, uh, I wouldn't put that out of the equation. I mean, DeKalb is coming into this game, I think it would be their second straight home game at a Husky Stadium, and if they could continue on winning, say they go into that game 2-0, and they could probably go out 3-0. Now, Sycamore is a team that finished the season 5-5 five and five last year. They lost in the playoffs to Montini, but they lost a lot of players. They lost five guys to college football, one guy to college baseball, and, you know, they really don't know what they have on offense. All their skill position players are new, but Michael Buckner is a kid that has started 19 games. He's going to be their quarterback now, but this will be his third start at quarterback. I know you had little experience watching him in his two games as a, at the end of his sophomore year. What do you, what'd you think? Uh, especially in the last game uh, on senior night two, uh, two years ago, he looked pretty solid and he helped the team, uh, I think, win that game, if I remember correctly. Uh, I mean, if he did it as a sophomore, he's going to do it again as a senior. I mean, granted, last year he was a running back, but, I mean, he's got the knowledge of the system. He's been there for three years, and I think he's going to do pretty good for them. What I noticed in practice from him is he had a lot of confidence, and he should get a little bit more on Friday night. They play a streeter team that they beat 41 nothing last year, and it looks like it should be a lot of the same this year. And now on to Genoa Kingston. They were a playoff team last year, too. Can they repeat? You know, I think they uh, they can, 
but it depends on how well they can utilize the speed that they have. They have they lost 17 starters from last year from an eight and three team that went to the second round of the playoffs. But they lost all those guys. They lost Casey McCarty, who was arguably you know the heart and soul of their team. But they do have T.C. Holterhouse at running back. He's a guy who's been clocked at four five in the forty. He's their he's their running back, and he's a guy that I think can do a lot for them this year. I think they're not going to sneak up on anybody th- this year. They uh, they went to the playoffs for the first time in 13 years last season, and so we'll you know we'll see how things progress in the first couple games. All right, now they opened with Chicago Longwood on Friday night. Yes, Tell us did. a little bit about that. Well, last year it was a blowout, a 46 nothing win for Genoa Kingston. I pretty much expect the same thing for uh, for this year. All right, that's all we got for this week. That's our preview of high school and NIU football. We'll be back here every week, every Wednesday. Check for more of the press box at dailychronicle.com. Uh, if you guys, we do this for you, so if you guys have any comments, any suggestions, anything you want to hear about, then you can email us at sports at daily-chronicle.com, or you can give us a call. It's 815-756-4841, extension 224. Thanks a lot.